provide our voices, uh, but have fun with the process. Uh, because there is like, uh, we were just talking about with Mr. Cedric, there is no more pure form of civic engagement than uh, this very task force that we're all participating in right now. Lauren, good to see you. How are you? Ajmel. Get started in about three minutes. All righty. Show of thumbs, everybody have a good day today. Decent day, give it a little finger wiggles. Don't do anything if you didn't have a good day. Dwayne, I see. Yeah, okay, I saw you, Dwayne, don't worry. I see that folks are starting to call in. Um, we're gonna get started in about three minutes. Uh, give folks some uh, time to get here, uh, to drive and park and to jump onto their Zoom links. <clears throat> Jamal and De Jevin, do you guys want us off? You joined at the right uh, moment, Councilwoman. So. Uh, we're going to get started here, folks, uh, as task force members join, uh, we'll, we'll let them join, but we're going to, we're going to get started. I'm going to hand it off to Councilwoman Searcy to give us the charge and really orient you all to the background of the task force and, uh, the vision, the vision, uh, her and the council and, and the members here from the city of Tacoma Park had in mind when creating this resolution. So to give you all a bit of background on, on the work and what we're looking to do uh, moving forward. So I'll hand it off to you, Councilwoman, to take the charge. Thank you so much. Uh, so first, I want to thank all of you um, for agreeing to serve in this important way. Um, when uh, the mayor, Councilmember Siemens, and myself uh, first got together and said, what could we do um, to further advance not just public safety, but public safety through a lens of race equity in our city. Um, we took stock of what we had done already. Um, the city of Tacoma Park has um, already issued a ton of resolutions really geared at towards ensuring that our um, police force are operating um, with more of a guardian mentality, that they embody the characteristics that we value here in the city um, we took a number of steps, um, not only from hiring our new police chief, um, but also looking at a, lot, a number of the different ways in which our police staff are being trained. Um, but we also recognized that there was a lot more that could be done and that public safety is broader than policing. Um, and so in light of the things that have been happening in our nation, George Floyd, among many other black and brown people who have been um, killed at the hands of police, um, we thought it would be prudent for us to take stock um, and reevaluate and take a resident driven approach in doing that. Um, again, I can't stress enough that public safety is more than just policing. Um, we have a number of people in our community who need access, access to mental health services, access to um, other kinds of recreational social support services. And so I want to encourage you all to think of public safety in that broader sense. And also keep in mind that the work that you're doing today is critical. It's important not just to informing how we operate as a city today, but it also is critical in informing how we operate in the city going forward. I am committed and I'm sure my colleagues are as well to take your, your recommendations or the things that you discuss through this task force process seriously um, and to also identify ways in which we can truly take action on what you put forward. So again, I want to thank you for dedicating your time um, and your expertise and your willingness to inform this process. And definitely want to thank um, LINK and Expected Advisory um, for all of your hard work. Um, so with that, I'll kind of turn things over to LINK um, and uh, get started with the meeting for today. Awesome. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, thank you to all the task force and members of the 
uh, city government who are, who are represented here today. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jamal Holtz. Uh, I am a lead facilitator with Link Strategic Partners. Uh, I am excited to kick off this important process with you all tonight. Uh, also, my colleagues join with us tonight to help play a critical role, support role, and ensuring that we're capturing all of our conversation from, uh, from tonight and moving forward. Uh, we have Michael Aiken, who's the president of Link Strategic Partners. Michael, wave your hand. Uh, Molly Mitzner, who is a support facilitator. Um, Carol Lambert, uh, who's a, also a support facilitator and note taker for tonight. Uh, Jacqueline Miller, uh, who's also a support facilitator and note taker for tonight. Uh, and Jay Early, who's also a support facilitator and note taker for tonight. Uh, and then also Jevin Hodge, who is uh, also one of our lead facilitators for uh, at Link, uh, who you will hear more from uh, momentarily. So to give you all a quick overview of Link Strategic Partners, we're a social impact firm that does strategic communications and community engagement. We're based um, here in the region. Uh, we've done lots of community work in Montgomery County. Uh, so excited to be doing this work with you all uh, in the city of Tacoma Park, really to reimagine public safety. Uh, we have also partnered with Cordell Cotter. Cordell, raise your hand. Uh, of Expected Advisory, a BIPOC-led facilitators organization a uh, facilitators organization that has led similar conversations like this across the, uh, the region and the country. Um, so we'll, we'll take a deep dive in uh, and, and talk more about the task force and timeline. Before we do that, uh, we'd like to get to know you all uh, and jump off with some introductions. So here's what we will we'll, we'll do. Uh, we'll take two minutes um, and enough about the boring and critical details about us. We'll <laughs> take this time to talk about you all and, and your community. So now let's take a moment to share in two minutes your name, uh, affiliation in the ward you live in uh, and tell us your why. Um, tell us why did you join the task force? Um, what are you looking forward to doing uh, as we're kicking off this work together? So I'll start in the order of my screen uh, with Sadie. I uh, hate to go with the, the youngest first, but young people are taking the charge here. So Sadie, kick us off. Hi everyone, my name is Sadie. Um, I live in Ward 3 and um, I'm not like affiliated with anything specifically, uh, but I got interested in this work, I guess, at the start of my fall semester, um, a few months ago at UNC. I've been working with a couple peers since then and we've been trying to like primarily get a counseling dispatch option to students at UNC that's unarmed in case they have like mental health calls or anything related to that. And then also we want to establish a student advisory board or now we've changed it to community advisory board. Um, and we're in the process of like combining the town's crisis unit with UNC's police department so that's in the works now. And we've like met with Tim Black from Cahoots and done a lot of research throughout the fall. So when I found out about this task force, I just thought it aligned really well. And I love Tacoma Park. I was born and raised there. And I wanted to be involved in making Tacoma Park a community that's safer, but also like better fits the needs of the residents. So. Thank you for that. Um, and I'm going to send the vents. If I mess up your name, please, please, please keep correcting me until I get it right. Um, Olajade? Olajade? G Day. G Day. Got it. Yes. Um, so I live in Ward 6. I'm on the police advisory board. So I uh, I joined that because I had, interest, I had an interest in, um, I guess, how policing in Tacoma Park was taking place. And um, kind of wanted to put my two cents in there in terms of what I thought and you know what my frame of reference was. Um, and so this kind of just uh, kind of paired into that uh, larger involvement and has provided me an opportunity to, to uh, engage and kind of try to contribute. That's basically it. So Dwayne. Yes, how are you guys doing? So um, yeah, I'm Dwayne Scott, I am a resident of Ward 6. I'm fairly much a, I would say, lived in, in and around this area for most of my life. Um, raised in, D, born in DC, raised in Silver Spring. Went to college in, in DC as well at Howard. Um, I think for me, I have, no doubt, 
no doubt. All the all day, every day, <laughs> you know. Um, outside, outside of that, I think for me personally, I just have been engaged uh, personally, and professionally in this type of work at least uh, for most of my, you know, professional career. Um, and I think like uh, like many people who possibly join, I don't want to speak for everybody, but probably many people, the uh, the ongoing issues with um, police violence and injustice in, 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 our, in our country, and plus the searing uh, impact of, of the George Floyd murder had a profound impact on, 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 on me. And, and uh, when the opportunity came to, to join this task force, I thought it was a, a great way for me to be able to uh, contribute my voice to working towards helping uh, create a, a safer community in which uh, I live and which my children live in and, um, uh, and uh, uh, coordinate and, and work with my neighbors and uh, members of the council to, to move uh, this, in our, help our community become more safe, to be, to be safer um, and equitable in regards to how safety and uh, policing and, uh, occur in our community. Thank you, Dewine, I appreciate that. Adam B. Oh, it's two Bs, Adam Brashik. Oh, you all got <laughs> names, actually. Yes, uh, uh, Kimmy Nakamura was having a little trouble getting into the meeting, and I sent him my link, but somehow I also sent him my username. So uh, I'm the real Adam Braskich. <laughs> three dots at the top right and, and rename uh, yourself. Uh, go ahead, Adam. OK. Uh, well, thank you, Jamal. Um, I uh, come to the task force as a relatively new resident of the city. I've been here for a few years. Um, a graduate of the University of Maryland. Uh, after college, I worked as a police officer in Baltimore City, uh, then went to law school, worked in private practice for a while, and I'm now a prosecutor in Washington, D.C. So all of uh, many of the issues that are, are often raised in, in these um, efforts, these, these task forces are you know, part of my day-to-day -day work, and I've, I've often felt like I could contribute something to trying to help um, form policies that will improve the, the crises of police violence and, and lack of confidence in, in the police and trust in the police. And I thought, what better uh, place to do that than my hometown with, with this task force? So I hope that uh, I can find that I have some ideas that can um, make for a better police community relationship here in Tacoma Park. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Jumana. Hello. Um, so obviously you know my name, Jumana Musa. I, I guess affiliation, you know, work-wise, I work for the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, but I've spent the past 20 years really. Well, I've been a resident of Tacoma Park now for 20 years. It will be 20 years in December, but I've also spent the past 20 years working on just about every kind of enforcement. Um, and you know, worked both at the federal level and the state and local level. I should say I'm Ward 6. Let me not leave out Ward 6. Um, but in doing that, uh, working with a lot of groups who work at the state and local level, I think that there is um, always been an issue where the idea of what is safe or what is secure is defined around a crisis of criminal or criminality. And I think that that framing always leads to a response that is enforcement and police. And that if you look at real crisis, and I think that the pandemic has sort of laid bare the real crisis being people's access to sometimes basic amenities, um, access to you know, everything from water, food, housing, the things that we've all seen. And so I think that one of the reasons I really wanted to do this is I think that this is an opportunity to think really broadly. And you know, to me, I appreciate what, that, what Adam said, but it's not really about building better community police relations, but really thinking holistically about what, what builds secure communities, right? What uplifts communities. And that going from that perspective, I think gives us a lot more options. And I think if Tacoma Park really sort of goes out there and does something really well, it can be very much a standard bearer for other places to look to, because normally these kinds of things, and we've already seen the reactions in the press that you know, the sky will fall and there'll be, you know, crime in the streets everywhere. You won't be able to walk to your car um, to show that actually you can do these things and you can create safer spaces. I mean, it's being done around the country. And I feel like we have an opportunity here to really think through this in a way that will be 
an example to other places of what's possible and to the benefit of our residents as well. Thank you, Jimena. Lauren. Hi, um, my name is Lauren Vantol. Um, I am a resident of Ward 1. I live right on the main drag, Philadelphia Avenue. Um, in terms of affiliation, I'm on the PTA, Piney Branch um, Elementary School PTA Executive Board. I am the representative of, of the PTA to the NAACP Parent Council of Montgomery County. Um, and so I talk to a lot of parents who have a lot of concerns about, you know, just their kids and access to kind of going along with what Jamana had said, access to basic necessities and what they what they need. Um, I have a 10 year old son and I kind of joined this task force kind of thinking of him being moving around in this society and the world as it is today um, and kind of really wanting to have my voice heard and for Tacoma Park to be, you know, at the forefront of kind of rethinking how this can all be done, you know, in a positive way. And I'm also a Howard graduate, so HU. Um, and so I'm <laughs> just going to throw that in there too. And I'm happy to be here. I'm a Maryland resident forever. I've been, grew up in Silver Spring um, and I now live in Tacoma Park. So happy to be here. We may have to make some norms around the HU, you know, chat. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, Ashmel, I'll go, Dwayne, were you gonna jump in? I just want to throw in a you know, you and know. Um, as, <laughs> as everybody as everybody knows, we are going to, we have been and probably are going to be more insufferable um, to live and deal with, so. Yep. Oh, <laughs> so I'll, I'll add on to that. You know, I taught at Howard on and off for the last 10 years at the law school, so no, no doubt, H, you know. Um, <laughs> I'll be quick. Ashmel Qureshi, uh, I'm a litigator at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Uh, before that, I spent several years at the ACLU's national office as a litigator as well. And as I mentioned, I taught at Howard too. Um, worked on a variety of different civil rights issues, whether it's education, uh, criminal justice, voting rights, or uh, economic justice, uh, all of LDF's core issues. Uh, hopefully I bring something to the table and uh, I used to be Jimena's intern. Wow. Michael Rubin. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Rubin, live in Ward 2. Um, <clears throat> moved to Tacoma Park about I, almost three years ago, so been looking for an opportunity to engage a little bit, so I guess I found one. Uh, in terms of affiliations, I'm Managing Director at Impact Silver Spring. I've been there for seven years. We're an organization that works on racial and economic equity in the county. Um, I also represent Impact on the Silver Spring Justice Coalition. Um, been involved with Progressive Neighbors, Jews United for Justice, serve on two boards, Crossroads Community Food Network and CHI Centers on New Hampshire Avenue. Spent a lot of my career in disability, uh, providing supports to adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities. Another group that doesn't always get thought of in terms of their interactions with police. So I'm sensitive to some of the issues that they have. So I really think that Tacoma Park, like uh, Jumana said, could be a standard bearer for the region. I think our politics, our diversity and our size give us some opportunity to really do some experimentation with public safety that I think would be much more difficult for like Montgomery County to do overall with much less investment. I think we can try some things out. So I'm just looking forward to the possibilities and working with all of you. Awesome, thank you. And just to highlight that, we'll, we'll, Cordell will lead us to a discussion on that exact point uh, right after introductions. Uh, email. Thank you. So uh, I'll, I'll make this very quick. At Neil Parker, I've lived in Tacoma Park since 1996. And as far as affiliation, I'm with, I volunteer with Tacoma Park Mobilization, working on policing reform and other uh, equity issues. I also volunteer with the Silver Spring Justice Coalition and obviously as building on what other people have said, I think this is a, you know, an opportunity to really try some things because it's a relatively small and very progressive community. And I think what we do here, you know, if we're successful, could be a model for other communities. I think we can push the envelope here again because this is such a, a progressive community and really, you know, explore options that would be beyond some other jurisdiction's ambition or, or that wouldn't be realistic. So thanks for this opportunity. 
Thank you. Uh, Kiminori. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Kiminori Nakamura. I've uh, been living in Takuma Park for the last uh, 10 years or so. I, uh, I'm an assistant uh, research professor at the University of Maryland, Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Uh, so I have my PhD from Carnegie Mellon Public Policy. So um, I do uh, criminal justice sort of policy issues uh, in terms of research, uh, corrections, policing, sentencing and courts. Um, so I'm trying to contribute um, to the task force uh, to keep the you know, recommendations and solutions for problems generally in a sort of fact-based database. Um, so hopefully I can contribute. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Zitlali. Hi, yes, it's Zitlali. Um, like, sounds like an S. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Zitlali. Um, I have been living in Tacoma Park for a little over a year. Um, and I, um, I, in terms of organizational affiliation, I'm here as an individual, but my background is in community organizing. Um, and so my, my commitments and values, I think generally stand to, to align and to center um, social movements, um, particularly the calls to, to defund the police and, and to reinvest in communities and life-giving institutions. And so I, 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 bring that, I bring those values to this space and I really believe in, in, in Tacoma Park and, and that we, like everybody else mentioned, right, the, the, the real possibilities for, for radical change. And, and by radical, I really mean by right, getting to the root Right, and I think that um, a lot of us are thinking critically about like crime and criminality, and and um, that's really exciting. And I'm I'm glad to be a part of this group and to get to know all of you all, and and hopefully work on some um, significant changes. Thank you, Christina. Hi, my name is Chris Morado. Um, I've been a Tacoma Park community member for a little over six years. Um, my affiliation in this area volunteer wise has really been limited to um, working with my immediate community. I live in a building here with about 77 units and also I work with Casa de Maryland. Um, and my professional life, I'm an educator. I'm assistant principal for one of the middle schools in Washington, DC. And I just, I really believe in, in community and sort of investing in where you are. And so that's, that's what brought me here. Thank you. Awesome. So we got to know everyone. Uh, great. Uh, now it's time for us to really delve into the work and we'll spend uh, over the next few months focused on this work. Before I hand it over to my colleague Cordell uh, and Molly to screen share the slide deck, um, uh, we'll, we'll jump into a quick overview of Norm's uh, expectations and, and scope and talk about timeline and really the focus of this task force and the work we'll be doing. Uh, but at each point of these uh, uh, points, we, we want to ensure that we're creating entry points for discussions for you all to uh, bring in your feedback and, and, and really making this a collaborative process. Um, because again, this is your task force. Uh, we're here to work with you to keep uh, to ensure that we're uh, driving a community-driven process. So um, I'll hand it over to my colleague Cordell um, as Molly shares screen uh, with the slide deck. Cordell, the floor is yours. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, firstly, Dr. Nakamura, I am also a Heinz College graduate, as is my lovely wife. Uh, so go Tartans. We don't have anything cool like you know, but we do have a fabric called a Tartan. That is our mascot. So as with anything of great significance, uh, like you are tackling, uh, establishing some norms are very important. And so norms, the way, at least the way we use it is these agreed upon behavior, mutual accountabilities that will govern our time together. And so we have uh, several for you to consider. Um, firstly, enter with curiosity. Um, things will be challenging. That is the point. Uh, we are not supposed to agree. You know, in my other life, I, I lead 
a forum for Socratic dialogue and I'm, I organize verbal fights. That's exactly what we're trying to do here, but fighting for a purpose, you know, um, a battle of ideas to, to make Tacoma Park better. Uh, when you are not speaking, mute your telephone uh, and your microphone, I should say, uh, in this new world of work, and uh, we're using Zoom or Google Meet or Chime if you're an Amazon or uh, whatever de other telephonic device, but when you're not speaking to eliminate the extra noise, please mute your microphone. Um, listen to understand. Uh, before you are planning your response, hear what they have to say, consider it, take a beat, and then respond, okay? Um, Encourage uh, disagreement without being disagreeable. Um, as we've stated, um, we all have different views on these, these very important issues of public safety. And you, know, you, you gotta figure out a, a way of uh, behaving in a way you want people to behave towards you. So uh, staying mentally present the whole time. Um, the average attention span in the Zoom world is about 45 minutes. We're very cognizant of that. And we'll try to take breaks as necessary, but try to stay present. Don't look at your phone. Um, and one of my favorites, I always like to start talking when I'm on mute. So be cognizant of where your mute buttons are and everything. Uh, this is a brave space. Um, the only part of that that is not public is your subcommittee. We'll talk about that later. But these are public meetings, but please be brave. Uh, walk towards danger as we are contemplating uh, where or what Tacoma Park should do with respect to public safety. Uh, please respect each other, mutual respect, that, that goes without saying. Um, everyone has a, a contribution to make. Um, we are in rough draft, we're learning together. We're, this is a learning journey. Um, so speak in rough draft is perfectly okay if your idea isn't completely formulated. Say it out loud, hey, you know, I'm just thinking. Um, I love to start a conversation that way so people know that this isn't a fully thought out thought. I'm thinking of it as I'm saying it. Uh, bring your thoughtfulness to your responses. Be concise. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. And uh, so be as concise as you possibly can be. Um, what I do to help me is sometimes I write out talking points of what I want to say. So when I'm in the queue, uh, I'll write out my talking points and then I'll be ready to hit the ground running. Uh, Listen attentively, please don't interrupt. Um, it's very challenging for multiple voices to be speaking at the same time on Zoom. Uh, the system just can't handle that well. And so to ensure that everyone is hearing each other fully, please don't speak over each other. That'd be great. Um, let's attack the problem at the person. Uh, we all have different points of view. Um, and I think it's important to remember this is just a perspective that I'm uh, representing. You all are from different wards, different, different points of view. Uh, different experiences with public safety. So bring that to the table and we're all respected. Um, let's avoid taking um, narrow views based on your organization, your particular point of view. It's fine to represent it, but, but make sure that to make room for other points of view. Uh, use I statements that depersonalize it. Make sure you're not talking about anyone else. So I statements and assume good intentions. I think that's something we should do in all of our lives. So talking about scope here, um, this is a, a, a broad mandate, yet um, something that has to be grounded in reality. Um, that This task force has been charged with developing recommendations uh, to make Tacoma Park a, a safer, more livable community uh, with an emphasis on addressing racial inequalities that exist in government services revolving around public safety. So the, the, the guiding principle for this effort, and I, I can't say this any clearer than this, it has to be fact-based, meaning we know there are a lot of things happening around the country, but we're talking about Tacoma Park, okay? Let's be clear about that. We're talking about Tacoma Park. Um, so it's just, it's important to remember what's actually happening here and, and these wards. Uh, you'll essentially a, a resident powered policy innovation lab uh, the city council and your fellow residents are, are looking for ideas, and that is what you're going to provide. So as we work together uh, over the next several weeks, let's hold each other accountable, not only to the norms, but staying on the mission and within the scope of this task force and fact base.
Great. So brief discussion of what's definitely in scope, okay? And please push back if you don't agree. What's in scope? Discussion of public safety data. Uh, you all received these packets, 600 pages. It's a lot of data. Take your time to go through it. Uh, but that's data you, you get to report from uh, the police chief uh, that has not been made public yet, but it will be. You're getting a sneak peek, if you will. Um, so let's let's. That is the the, the universe that we're discussing. Uh, public safety reform ideas from other cities, regions, countries. Remember, you got to scale it down or up for Tacoma Park. Uh, but what's out of scope? Discussion of personally identifying information of of, of any kind. Okay, this is not personal. Uh, reform of state, federal, Maryland, or Montgomery County laws or policy. That is something that Tacoma Park City Council cannot do. So let's not waste any time on that. And again, uh, any recommendations of specific personnel changes for city department employees. So let's, let's open up the floor, if we will, uh, to talk about um, the norms and the scope. What discussion would you all like to have about that? Anything I said that didn't uh, jive with your expectation? I do, before we jump into the conversation, is what my complete sorrows, uh, Mr. Cedric Boatman, who actually was the very first person here at this meeting, which is- Oh, wow. Issue, uh, forgot to introduce himself. Uh, Mr. Boatman, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us your why before we jump into the dialogue. Real quick, uh, I guess it'd be Ward 4, Ritchie Avenue. I grew up on Ritchie Avenue in the mid 50s and to this present time now. My parents had just sold their house a few years back because they had passed away. But I grew up in this area. I am the district supervisor for security for Montgomery County Public Schools. And I've been in law enforcement, but uh, uh, somebody, a, a resident from the community of Ritchie Avenue asked me what I joined in task force because I know a lot of the history of the Coma Park from uh, from really the early 60s all the way up to present day. And I am the president uh, for uh, uh, the Coma Park Day. We have a, through, for the African-American community, we started about four or five years ago to have a, the Coma Park Day and friends. So people who grew up in the Coma Park went to Montgomery Blair High School, surrounding high schools. We, we meet and we had one the first one was three years ago, and we had it at uh, Candy Cane Park, which is off of 16th Street. And the uh, first one, we had 400 people showed up. It came from all over uh, California, Minnesota, Georgia. And we were surprised. And ever since then, we've done it. We, it's always the second, it's always the second, sad, third Saturday in June. It's the week right after Father's Day. The first day we had was on Father's Day. And people asked, this is great. Can we do it after that? And we've done it ever since. And we weren't having it this past because of COVID. But as soon as everything starts up again, we will have it again. And we have it at Argo Park now, right down the street from Holy Cross Hospital. So that's where the Coma Park Day is. Thank you, Mr. Bum. I hope I didn't lose my invite to that by missing. Nah, that. Man, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Also back over to Cordell uh, to talk to uh, Scope. Yes, yeah, scope and norms. I, any feedback on what we said? Um, and, and I know I said that, you know, reform of state, federal, local laws is not something that's possible. But if there is a, a law, existing law that's an impediment to, to reform, let's at least call it out so we can mention it. Okay, deal? So any this, feedback this is, whatsoever? Yes, sir. So this is, this is Dwayne. I just wanted to ask, I mean, I took the somewhat of a brief look at some of the documents that were, were distributed before, prior to the meeting. Um, and I just, it's quite a bit and it's quite a bit to get through. So I was wondering, is there a prior, is, uh, within those documents, is there some level of a, uh, some sort of priority that, that we should focus on? Or is that going to be done or discussed later in regards to subgroups and they will focus on aspects of the data? Um, because uh, as, you, as you can imagine, you know, we do have, short period of time to do a tremendous exactly. amount of work. So it would be helpful to be able to, to narrow to narrow into what is what are the more important things that we should focus on. Not not to exclude things because there's a lot of things to think about, but within the data that you provided, what can we focus on? 
excellent point you're making. And yes, we will be going to subgroups. But moreover, you're going to have, uh, I believe, at least four department leaders coming in the next meeting. And they're going to give separate presentations to bring your attention to certain aspects of, of the data. And so um, it is a re it's reference material for you. No expectation you read every single line. You're right, it's a lot of data. But we wanted you to have the universe of, of the everything that the city uh, works with. Now you have it as well, uh, but you'll have four department leaders coming in our next meeting to help focus your mind on particular facets of the data. Yes, Michael. Just a quick question. So, I mean, I appreciate all the information that was provided, but is there data that's disaggregated by race, which I think is really important to look at? both for policing, but for other things as well. I don't think you can really measure any improvements in racial equity without that. And I know that's a problem in getting that data. And I just wonder to what extent we'll be able to see some of that. Yep. Can I jump in real quick, Cordell? Yes, go ahead. I don't want us to get pigeonholed into the, the data and research conversation because we're uh, literally talking about that in the next point of the agenda. Um, so I'm gonna give you all overview of the data, talk through the research, and then we're gonna have a discussion on that and which, what else more you need and then we can jump into those type of points. Uh, I wanna make sure we acknowledge Jumana who hand has been raised, uh, but also center the discussion back around the scope and really discussing on whether or not we want this task force to focus on, uh, uh, should we make it a focus to, 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 uh, uh, to talk about uh, regional and, and statewide um, recommendations and approaches that you all in the city council can work together and lobby for. Um, so let, let's center that discussion back around scope. So Jumana, go for it. Um, yeah, so I just had a couple small points that were maybe even more processed than scope that goes back to agreements and things. Um, although I just piggybacking on what Dwayne said, I think a roadmap to the documents would be really good because every file you open has like 12 or 15 different documents in it and you really don't know what they are until you start opening them and reading through and so if that could exist in the world, that would be really helpful. Um, but the other two, just again, process points. One is uh, <laughs> just in terms of these conversations, a really clear indication of how people get, you know, in line to talk, whether it's you use the little raise your hand button, do you wanna raise your hand physically? Mm -hmm. Do you put stack in the chat? I know it sounds, uh, you know, kind of nitpicky, but it makes it a lot easier if we all understand how to sort of put ourselves in line to talk. Um, so that's the second thing. And the third thing is, you know, I think we all should have come at this with our different backgrounds and different perspectives. And so when it comes to the common understandings, I always find it useful that part of the common understanding has to be not just that sometimes people can use terms which are very sort of technical and not clear to everybody, but that sometimes we can use the same terms but mean very different things. Mm -hmm. And so in the context of understandings, um, keeping the perspective that what you you know you might want to add some texture to what you're saying because what you think a term means may not mean the same thing to somebody else excellent point thank you and i'll, I'll take your second point first and as the facilitators jevin and jamal and myself uh we're, we're, we're keeping a cue you can raise your hand we'll be in smaller groups so you can do this so we know that you're up you can also put it in the chat as a direct message that you're up but um hopefully that when we break the groups down in smaller portions um with just five people in the room, it won't be a problem with folks uh, knowing when they have an opportunity to speak. And I please forgive me, the, the first question was again. Uh, just a roadmap to the new roadmap, documents. Yes. Yeah. So Jamal, I'll cover some of that as well as the department leads that are coming in our next meeting. And your third question. Uh, terms and definitions and not assuming that everybody understands them the same way you understand them. Yeah, this room is quite stacked. I think Tacoma Park in general is stacked. As I was reading your bios, I'm just like, wow, I think they should facilitate. Uh, professors and, and statisticians, you all are, are brilliant. And so it would be wise um, if you're using some terms and someone thinks they know, but they don't, just say, excuse me, pardon me, an interjection. Um, Juana, do you mean the following when you say this? So I, hopefully it'd be a safe enough place that you will feel encouraged and, and bold enough to, to ask each other questions like that, just to go to the next level uh, to ensure a mutual understanding of terms. But you're exactly right, Juan. I mean, that happens every single day, especially on issues this sensitive. Thank you so much. Any others? Duane, did you just wave your hand? 
Oh, that's a fan. My apologies. My apologies. No, it's, no, no, it's just, like, just my just my pen. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, okay, great. Sitali, yes. Z Zitali? Yes, it's Sitlali, like an S. Sitlali. I'll get um, it, I promise. I just I think just for clarification, I don't know if people um just shared their pronouns. Just I want to make sure that we know what people's pronouns are and I, I don't want to assume. So if I'm not sure if we can do that like either today or you know at, as soon as possible. I, I think you just add them to your name and that's exactly that's for me the easiest way so everybody can see them. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Just to rename your bot your box. Just like you, you want them just did. You can see she, her, um, for your preferred pronoun. So we'll know. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you so much. Looking forward to working with you all. I will give the floor back to Jamal. Awesome. Uh, as Molly's sharing the screen again, um, I think one of the things I do want to know is uh, is that all everything that we present or talk through is is all up for uh, Molly. It's in it's in like a weird presenters share screen type of thing um, where I can see everything happening. Uh, but everything is up for a, conver a conversation and, and up for you all's discretion and. and we welcome feedback uh, because we want this to be the U.S. task force. Um, so we'll, we'll make those updates and edits to the norms and expectations. Uh, I think there were some good points and good valid points made that as we move forward in this, these dialogues, that I think it's important for us to re revert back to and, and say here are the things that we agreed upon as a, as a team. Um, and, and those are things that we can work, work on as, as we um, move forward in the process. Um, Awesome. Any questions as Molly sharing her screen? I know we're moving pretty fast. Awesome. Molly, did you need support? Sorry, I thought I was sharing it. <laughs> no. Here we go. There we go. Awesome. So this is pretty much the timeline schedule and format in which we, we want to talk through uh, the process and, and what the over the next few months will look like. We wanted to make sure we had some redundancy, but also in some consistency with some of these meetings. Uh, so it, it makes sense. So we aren't all uh, thinking about so many schedules and, and we know that some of you all may not be able to, uh, I know that some of you all may share some time constraints. Uh, but what we did here was what was that we proposed a, a schedule where we held task force meetings on one Tuesday and on the following Tuesday we'll host a subcommittee meeting. Uh, and the subcommittees uh, in that structure will operate certainly different than uh, there's a question in the chat about if these meetings are recorded. These meetings are recorded, uh, which is what I was going to mention in the format. So what we want to do with these meetings is uh, there will be focused on you all, uh, task force members, uh, to, uh, every Tuesday. And as we have a discussion, the, ne uh, the next meeting on the 23rd around subcommittees, will then divide into subcommittees that will go bi-weekly and, and the task force would then go as well. The task force meetings as a, as a whole will also go bi-weekly. Um, we're asking for 120 minutes for the next uh, meeting on the 23rd, primarily because we, we're, we're bringing in city agencies to talk through the, the, uh, their departments and their overview budget and, and things like that to give you all the overview of city government and some of the services. Uh, but then to have a deep conversation around subcommittees and, and structure. Uh, these meetings are recorded. So if there's times where you can't make it, uh, we'll be sharing those We'll be sharing this meeting uh, uh, via YouTube and, uh, and with you all as task force members. So you can follow up and look back at the meetings. Uh, subcommittees will, um, will operate uh, in smaller groups as Cordell mentioned. Uh, there will be a five task force members uh, on each subcommittee, but however, we'll define what those subcommittees are. Uh, we'll define what those subcommittees are in our next meeting uh, as a whole. Um, any, uh, any questions about timeline schedule or format or, uh, or a team, anything you want to add here, Jevin or Cordell? One thing I would note, uh, 
there'll be some time constraints and we understand that you all do have daily lives, uh, but we'll make sure that we're reporting back everything and giving you an opportunity for feedback. So if there's times where you may, and we'll give our contact information where you need to contact myself, Jevron or Cordell and say, hey, I went back and watched the meeting, here's my input. Uh, or I wanted to talk to you more about this. I'm not sure if we, could, we should focus on this. We'll find a way to integrate that back into the, the full task force into, our, uh, into the report and, and uh, what we're capturing in these conversations. As always, there's a full team of uh, link folks uh, who's capturing notes uh, who can help us capture these conversations and report it back to you all. Uh, as a follow-up to this meeting. Jevin or Cordell, would you add anything? Yeah, I just wanted to, to emphasize that all manner of communication are accepted. It's been my experience in groups like these that sometimes people uh, are too emotional or there's some barrier to them ex fully expressing a point they think everyone needs to hear. And so what I've encouraged people to do is to, to write it, to email it, and we'll make sure it's part of the record. Well, I can read it out loud or Jevin or, or Jamal can. So feel, don't feel constrained by verbal communication. There are multiple ways and we accept them all. And again, if there's any point of time when we need to just say, hey, we, we actually may need more time in subcommittees. We actually may need 120 minutes or we actually may only need 60 minutes. Can we adjust that? And we'll, we'll take that into account and, and make those uh, recommended changes. Molly, can you? Yep. Next. Jam Jamal, all other thing that I will add to that um, is that just keep in mind as we go through this, this is a living, breathing process. So this is a, a task force designed by you for you. So we're, we're building this together. Um, and so please, you know, building upon what Cordell just stated, do not hold back, be candid, be frank, be forward so that we can um, uh, meet the needs of the moment. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So overview of research, I know some of us uh, already jumped into this discussion, uh, but last week we shared tons of research and reports that were a lot of pages to read. Uh, it is in part reports from other task force, uh, guidance documents from groups uh, looking at similar issues and even some stuff from past presidential efforts as, as uh, well as blogs and annual reports for you all to reference uh, and really set the stage um, and get a framework on some of the work that other counties and cities and, and national task forces are doing across the nation. Um, so I'll go through this uh, to start with some of the cities and counties uh, and, and briefly what's in these, these documents uh, is Tacoma Park, Maryland, the city of Tacoma Park in which we're all uh, operating in. The city provided us with lots of data from different agencies and information on budget housing and economic development, uh, COVID-19 impacts, and additional Chief Duvall provided us with lots of data from Tacoma Park PD uh, and, um, and also access to that report ahead of his uh, testimony uh, at the council meeting tomorrow. Um, Arlington County of uh, Virginia established a task force to focus on police reform and provide recommendations regarding the policies of Arlington County Police Department. Uh, Eugene, Oregon recently released a report on their CAHOOTS program analysis. Uh, it is a program that many, city, many cities have uh, implemented uh, and is a mental health intervention program focused on responding to nonviolent mental health costs. Uh, Ithaca and Tompkins County, New York, um, after national tragedies, uh, state, uh, the state of New York issued an executive order that asks local leaders to examine police uh, safety systems, uh, public safety system systems. Uh, the city of uh, Ithaca and Tompkins County collaborated on an effort to reimagine public safety, very similar to this task force. Uh, that task force released a preliminary report with recommendations for uh, public comment and, and, and feedback. Uh, moving on to Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, they launched a task force that was recently wrapped up uh, uh, that we also, uh, some folks on this task force uh, had the opportunity to connect with their chairs. Uh, they launched a task force that was divided into five focus areas, uh, 911 and 301 call response, police and budget, uh, uh, Montgomery County Police Department programs, uh, alternative programs, uh, and mental health. Uh, ultimately, the task force was working uh, to provide recommendations to the county executive um, around policing and in, um, in those five focus areas uh, for implementation. Some of those recommendations have actually been implemented 
uh, as we see in some of our communities uh, in Tacoma Park. Uh, Prince George's County, Maryland established a task force to focus on police reform and provide recommendations regarding the uh, policies of policies of uh, the Prince George's County Police Department. So they were specifically fo focused on policy as it related to the police department. Uh, Tempe, Arizona currently has a task force similar in scope to this one, uh, looking at government services as a whole, from policing to mental health to workforce and many other city services, uh, city service related issues. And then uh, let me take a sip of lemonade. Um, President Barack Obama uh, launched a task force on 24th uh, century policing back in 2015. Uh, that was a report uh, that was published to be a guiding document for law enforcement agencies across the nation. Um, and then going on to the Council of Criminal Justice, uh, it was a task force on policing that convened civil rights uh, activists and leaders and law enforcement leaders to discuss strategy, strategies for effective policing and accountability measures. Uh, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement, NOBLE, uh, it was a reimagined public safety task force, again, similar to this one, but they could only convene black law enforcement executives from across the nation and provided a report of recommendations to law enforcement agencies that focused on uh, racial equity, uh, strategic funding decisions and other things to be a guide and document and guide and tool for law enforcement agencies across the nation. That was a lot. Uh, and I know it's a lot. We all know it's a lot. Uh, we got many other things to focus on that we're focusing on uh, outside of this task force. <clears throat> and we understand that uh, these reports, we're not asking you to read every document word for word. Uh, all of these make different recommendations and provide great reference points and materials to build upon. Uh, we're not gonna get into specific recommendations tonight on what each one of these task forces did uh, in our first meeting. However, your job moving forward is to think about and really think through, and Molly, if we can stop sharing screen here so we can have a discussion on this, but, but your job is moving forward is to really think through how we want to structure the task force and the final report. Uh, so some of those documents can be guiding documents to say, hey, I like how uh, the city of Tempe structured this report, or hey, I, I like this recommendation uh, on President Barack Obama's 24th century uh, 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 policing document. And we, we want that to be a, a guiding tool that we can work revert back to to kind of help us frame some of our conversations and, and, and use it as kind of like the research to revert back to, but I want to open it up for a discussion here. Uh, enough from me talking, but more want to hear from you all. Are there any other data points or research you would like us to, uh, that you would like to see? Are there anything, uh, is there anything else that we should add that could help inform this process? Uh, I know some folks mentioned uh, data on arrest and, and stuff like that. Uh, the chief has committed to providing that data. Whenever you all want the data, he's willing to provide it so we can provide that to you all. Um, and any reflection points from that data or research? Uh, again, we're gonna use that research to start thinking about how we format the report. Uh, so please take a look as we go forward and let us know if there are any formats or reports that stand out as models that you think we could, uh, that we should consider. So the floor is yours. Um, any discussion points? So I'll look at raise hand features. I'll, I'll look at the chat uh, and see folks who are physically raising their hand on the screen. Uh, or is that photo enough? So, so I see some questions in the chat. Jamal, I can, I can uh, read those out to you to make them a little bit easier. Um, there were some questions about, can the resources that were provided to the task force be made public? Um, I believe everything that was shared are fully public documents. So I think that could be a good resource to share of other task force um, reports, et cetera. So we'll look at that. There was also an ask uh, for the task force members if we could provide a bit of a roadmap for how to work through the 600 documents. If you can't get to all of them and there's no expectation that you can, we can certainly provide both the table of context and a roadmap for kind of a suggested order, uh, depending on what you're looking for. 
And I know it's pretty early in the first meeting to be asking you, what else do you need? Because you haven't had a chance to get through all of this. But earlier, there was some questions about, can we get ag uh, data aggregated or disaggregated a certain way? We want to capture as much of that as possible so that when we're going forward, we're collecting and providing you with the information before each meeting that's going to be helpful for you in your role as task force members. So not expecting a live answer right now. If you've got one, feel free to share it. But we also want to make sure that between each meeting, you know that you're going to have that space to ask us for follow-up information that we can package for you before the next meeting. Does that make yeah. sense? Great. Yeah. And, and that roadmap can provide, also can provide some of the context that I kind of laid out verbally to kind of help you think, that, okay, I, this is probably the document that I want to take a closer look at, um, but also provide some context of what some of these documents touch on. Sitali? Yeah, I guess I, I wanted to know if there would be opportunities to hear from like the general community, if they had any recommendations or, or input to the task force and if there would be opportunities for that. Yes, and, and Jevin, you all have beaten us ahead of the agenda point at every time. Jevin is gonna talk about, uh, well, one, will we kick this process off with some, with the stakeholder audit process? but also we're all believers in creating many entry points for engagement. Uh, so we have had conversations and we will be moving forward with um, creating an opportunity for some public feedback. Uh, there'll be a link uh, for folks to kind of share some public feedback who are in this meeting, but we'll also post something on the website where folks can uh, email or share some of their feedback and comments uh, and, and, and see more and share their comments on more of the work that we've been doing as a task force. So as they'll have access to the documents that you all are also reviewing, um, there are some things and some documents that, that may be only for task force view, uh, but these documents that we've shared with you all are already public uh, view and, and documents that the city have shared um, uh, uh, publicly. Um, so again, we'll, we will create that, those many entry points for engagement for community. We also talked about doing a, a public uh, uh, public feedback meeting that you all are hosting and, and, and listening on, and on where a community can come in and kind of invite and bring their feedback as well. So, so to answer your question in short, yes. Any other questions or discussion points around the research data? Jumani, were you Raising your hand and then Kiminori. You can start with Kiminori. I feel like I've already talked a lot. Go, go for it, Kiminori. Uh, are, are you providing, uh, I don't know, the, does the uh, police department have like annual reports and statistics, things like that? I'm not sure if they're uh, yep. providing or they're being the folder. Yep, some of that data is in the, uh, the, the resource folder. So if you go to the uh, city of Tacoma Park and go to the Tacoma PD folder, some of those uh, prior reports and data uh, is in there. Uh, the, the chief has also, uh, Jessica sent this around the, uh, his report that he's re uh, releasing tomorrow and presented to the city council uh, that you got to get eyes on first in the spirit of collaboration and really uh, getting the opportunity to, to work with you all along this process. Uh, so yes, th those documents are available. If there's something there, if, there, if there's something not there, you, you would like to see request it, uh, and we can figure out the best way to get that to the voter. And is is looking at the sort of original data because someone I think mentioned like disaggregate by you know race and you know location or word or whatever else that we want to cut the you know data through. Uh, is that part of the scope or is that that's beyond the scope? I, I know like in Montgomery County, like one of the recommendations was to look at you know nine one one like a call data or something right? yep. to better triage uh, services and things like that. So 100%. So part of, part of the charge of the task force uh, was to review some of the data um, and, and really look at the data to inform the process. So uh, you, we, we, we will get opportunities to do that. And I think that's where we'll then have a discussion around subgroups and subcommittees. So yes, that was a part of the charge and, and that we're committed to making sure that that's uh, in fact, in practice with this process. Susie, I know you were trying to jump in. Go ahead. 
Hi, I'm sorry. I'm Suzanne Ludlow. I'm the city manager. And I just, uh, I think the city staff get introduced near the end of this, but I did want to let people know that we're, uh, we certainly have been gathering data that's disaggregated, um, but we were very interested in hearing what the task force wants to see and how they'd want to see it as, as part of this. So there's a little bit of us not just handing you, not just, we, we didn't want to do it so that it ended up skewing the receipt of it. We really want to hear from the task force about what you want. So look forward to working uh, with the requests and to seeing what you have in mind. Yep. We'll go to Jumana and then I'll toss it over to Jeff and then take us into the stakeholder audit findings. Um, so this may be somewhere in all the information we got because it was a lot, but will we be, because um, I, I feel like a lot of the reports you sent were on sort of policing practices, but if we're reimagining public safety, is there an opportunity where we'd be looking specifically at the police budget and thinking about where maybe, because at the end of the day, recommendations do need some money behind them. And will there be an opportunity to sort of look at budgets and try and think about what might be, you know, used differently and used maybe outside of a law enforcement frame and in a different way to support community? Yep, I mean, yes, that, that's, that's certainly on the table. Uh, and I see the city manager is writing that down. Um, so we're capturing that. We'll make sure we're, we'll find a way to get it to you. Uh, and and um, before I toss it over to Jevin, um, Molly, I know we need to share screen again uh, with the stakeholder audit findings. So, Jamal, as we're doing that, I want to I want to jump in on that last question. It's very important. We are not just looking at policing, and we're not just looking at policing practices. There's an intentionality about not just doing that while also not ignoring that. So we will have police data, we will look at police practices, we will make the chief as available as is his team as needed. But in our next meeting, three of the four presentations have nothing to do with policing. We're taking a very broad look at public safety through the lens of economic development, housing, education, et cetera. And we'll get into this more in our next meeting. The subcommittees will actually start breaking down around those topics as well to make sure that they all get voice and we start looking at budgeting priorities related to each of those. So mm -hmm. we just wanna make sure that's clear as we kind of move into this process. Yes, we'll be looking at policing, but we won't just be looking at policing. It's a much right. broader dialogue and the budgeting aspects will certainly be a part of that. Does that make sense? No. Perfect. Yeah, I think that roadmap will help you see some of those reports that touch on much more in, in similar scope to broader than policing. So I'm done talking. I'll toss it over to Jevin. Thank you, Jamal. I deeply appreciate you all. And and I, I, I'm going to jump back to a comment that uh, was made earlier about Howard University, HU, Howard Bison on the call, you know. You I'm know. a George Washington. Yeah, you see, I know. I knew it was coming. I'm a George Washington graduate. And the one thing that I will say is that I've heard from several Howard Bison that all great things come from Howard. I will uh, uh, contradict that just a little bit and say all great things go through Howard. I spend my time on the yard too. So I uh, just, just throwing that out there for the sake of conversations, looking at you, Mr. Scott. So our, when we kicked off the process, um, the first thing that we did was a stakeholder audit report. Um, and what we, what we did is over the first uh, several weeks of the, of the uh, formulation of the task force, and as we were kicking things off, we conducted an audit of City of Tacoma Park uh, stakeholders to inform our work on reimagining public safety, uh, standing up the task force, and uh, gathering thoughts and ideas uh, to uh, shape the process as a whole. The audit included, but was not limited to Tacoma, Tacoma Park community members, faith leaders, business leaders, multifamily tenants, residential managers, educators, city officials, uh, participants from other national public safety task force, and community members at large. Um, as we were kicking things off, uh, we, we also included uh, focus groups to gauge the community perception of public safety in Tacoma Park. Um, and from the audit conversations, we identified some consistent themes. Uh, and next slide, please. From the audit conversations, we identified some consistent themes uh, that can help to inform the work moving forward, um, that can you can use as a thought provoking uh, uh, a data point. However, this is just another uh, bit of information uh, as we get the ball rolling and get things kicked off. Uh, and so as you see on the screen, we heard uh, from the, the uh, community members and stakeholders that we spoke with uh, and from our audit conversations that um, 
the, we, we, we can work to create a working definition of public safety uh, and what that means for Tacoma Park. With that, stakeholders suggested that uh, the task force should prioritize the needs of residents, especially those in marginalized communities. We heard that the consistent importance of uh, to review relevant data to identify the key areas of community concerns as they pertain to public safety. So keeping data at the forefront. In addition to that, we heard that uh, stakeholders recommended that we create many entry points for engagement. And so this we've touched on a number of different times. We want to make sure that community members can provide feedback to the process. We want to make sure that community members are included in the process as well, and that you all are voicing uh, have several method methods and ways to voice your community, uh, your opinions and concerns. Stakeholders recommended that the task force discussions include uh, structural disadvantages of uh, disinvestment in marginalized communities, lack of educational opportunities and community resources. So really touching upon what has led us to get to the point where we are now. We also heard from stakeholders that the task force can consider uh, discussing mental health and emotional health in addition to trauma-informed care uh, and how that impacts uh, the everyday lives of Tacoma Park residents. Stakeholders also suggested that if they were on the task force uh, that they would consider recommendations to the council that include in investing uh, in training relevant to cultural competency and effective communication around the cultural competency. We also heard that stakeholders recommended that task force partners with city departments throughout the process to reimagine public safety. And as a broader theme, we heard that public safety is more than just policing. Uh, and it includes all aspects of life from housing to public works uh, in the Tacoma Park community. Many stakeholders suggested that the Tacoma Park Task Force explore opportunities for youth involvement in the process. Uh, we heard several times that uh, if we want to truly be inclusive of, of all residents in our community, that we must have a, a, a youth voice and we must incorporate youth insight as we head forward. We also heard that stakeholders would like to see task force conversations around expanding community and recreational activities as it relates to public safety. Uh, and how that looks for the community at large and how we plan to include um, all public utilities and public uh, spaces in recreational uh, activities uh, in the process. So I'm gonna ask you to stop sharing screen, Molly. And I want us to transition into a conversation around goal setting uh, and a conversation around how um, we, we plan to view uh, the task force moving forward. So we're gonna do this popcorn style. Uh, feel free to either raise your hand, drop it into the chat box, or, or, uh, uh, or use the hand raise feature. But I want you to fill in the blank here, fill in the remainder of this sentence. By the end of the process, we hope to accomplish blank with the Reimagining Public Safety Task Force. Think about our goals, think about what we hope to achieve, think about uh, uh, the pathway that we're laying, think about the recommendations, think about the conversations that are to be had. By the end of our process, we hope to achieve blank. Any takers? Let me kick it off with some of what we've already heard, right? We heard that there needs to be real budgeting exercises as a part of this. It can't just be an up here discussion. It needs to look at budgeting as part of it. We've heard that the data needs to be informed, disaggregated, aggregated. We have to do it in a way that it's informing the discussion we're trying to have. Those are real and specific. That's the type of feedback that's really helpful and in a first meeting. So open the floor. In addition to that, let's think through uh, some of the themes that we heard from the stakeholder audit report. Uh, do you have any reflection points in the stakeholder audit report? Do you have uh, any uh, uh, reactions to the themes that you heard presented from community members within your community? So I, I guess I'll go. Um, Please. And along the lines of our uh, instructions at the beginning, which I agree with, 
<clears throat> speaking for myself, um, I think significantly shrinking the role of police in our communities, not only in terms of what police themselves are called on to do, but also a reimagining of the laws that we have in our community and what we define as appropriate for criminal through a criminal paradigm criminal paradigm and what we see through a paradigm of sort of social change and social mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. so significantly shrinking uh the footprint of police in our community okay thank you any other feedback thoughts reactions or goals for the, the, the process and the task force as a whole. Is it Lolly? No, other folks, like I've talked a lot, so if other folks have want to chime in and I can wait till after. Please feel free to jump in. We have we have some time to allocate it to this discussion. Yeah, I yeah, I wanna echo what Ajmel said. Um, and really thinking through alternatives to policing and, and reducing reducing the, the size and capacity um, or role of, of policing in Tacoma Park. Um, and I, I think um, a lot of a lot of the uh, reports that I'm seeing on the on the folder are related to police reforms or police recommendations coming within police task force or or like committees. And so I'm I'm curious. For us to, and, and you said that wasn't the only thing we were going to do, but I'm really curious for us to kind of look at other recommendations of alternatives to policing and, and, and what recommend, recommendations could look like um, that are not just reformist. Great insight. Great insight. Duane, I saw your comment in the chat box. Would you like me to present it? Sure. I mean, I could, I could present it. I just was trying to capture it in my mind and put it down. Um, so, and it, and it just builds on what, what was just being said by um, my two uh, panelists before me. I'm sorry, I didn't capture your names. And plus, I didn't want to, I don't want to butcher them. But um, essentially, considering outcomes are taking into consideration the experiences of residents in our community. So, I mean, the part of the feedback was that I was hearing was we want to also know what some of those experiences are, the tangible things that, that residents there interact, that residents have, have experienced in terms of their interaction with um, Tacoma Park's uh, police force, positive and negative, um, and build, build, on, build, build on recommendations based recommendations based on those experiences. And then I also want to think about, I think this reflects some of the previous comments, which is, um, you know, not, I don't have it formally set in my head, but building some level of response teams that can engage with issues related to mental health, substance abuse, um, things that are that may not or do not require the uh, direct involvement of, of police. And if there's an opportunity, if there's a need to involve police, those response teams can um, then in turn contact the police to when it becomes a raises, a raises the issue to a something that involves or needs a more uh, needs of police involvement. Um, mm -hmm. So those those are the two, not only two areas, but those are two, the first two areas, mental mental health and substance abuse that come into mind. Maybe also homelessness, transient, mm -hmm. um, transient individuals who need support. And I think someone also identified, I guess, I guess also thinking of, of just um, individuals of color and, and, and also mm -hmm. um, individuals, uh, individuals with disabilities, thinking about their needs um, mm -hmm. and the different um, ways that the police respond. But maybe that also could be part of the of disaggregated data to capture um, those experiences and how, they, how, the, how groups such as uh, people of color um, and um, individuals with disabilities and also the LGBT community, community here mm -hmm. in Tacoma Park and how, and how you know, the broad set of, of uh, groups experience uh, interactions with police and, and where recommendations can come from to support um, a more proactive way of, of responding and building those issues. Because I think we all are probably aware that, um, you know, policing tends to sometimes be thrown out there for every particular issue that comes up. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can identify 
ways to engage that don't that don't involve having the police respond to every single issue that that comes out, then I think we would be moving in a very positive direction in our community. Very well put, Dwayne. Thank you very much. And 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 I, I just want to comment on one item that you said. This is a safe space, and I'm leaning in on our norms. Just say it how it's on your chest and how it's on your heart. And that was beautiful. So just thank you very much, Cedric. I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer you uh, because you're you're a community resident that's been around here Thanks. and you know the community very well. But before that. Uh, uh, Jade, thank you very much. Uh, meaningful and positive outcomes. We definitely are going to strive for meaningful and positive outcomes. Uh, Cedric, I want you to share your thoughts. And then Michael, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're after Cedric. Um, I just wanted to listen because I wanted to get an understanding where the task force goes. I know there's been a lot of emphasis uh, for the incidents that have happened in the last couple of years, and you know, and not just in this community, but communities across the nation. And there's a lot of been emphasis on policing, but I think also we have to just look at the communities in which we live in. And we have to look at our attitudes to the communities that we live in and, 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 the, and the different cultures and what, and what we are gonna really truly be honest with the accepting and not accepting. We're all human mm -hmm. beings. And the difficulty is, is not so much the police state itself, I mean, they have been in law enforcement, it's the individuals that you ask to enforce it. It's very difficult to ask people to enforce a culture in communities that they know mm -hmm. nothing about, or they may have preconceived notions about about a culture and never have experience with it because mm -hmm. they, you know, through uh, generations of whatever of information has been given to them, negative or positive, creates a problem. And so, you know, with that being said, I mean, I've seen Come Apart come up and and uh, from where, which was just be a very small town, even before Maple Avenue Park Ritchie was built, uh, mm -hmm. even before where the police station was, where, where the firehouse is now. Uh, I can remember mm -hmm. how the, all of that and in the community, and to some degree, the Coma Park was a segregated community. A lot of people didn't know, a lot of people on Capitol Hill lived in the Coma Park. Those mm -hmm. were summer homes, those, those homes on, uh, Lee Avenue and, and, and on the other side of Lee those cottages, those were to Congress um, uh, persons on the hill, Capitol Hill, those would be summer homes, believe it or not, for them back in the 50s. Those were summer homes for them mm -hmm. and along that, that quarter. So, and, and, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and the Coma Park is definitely a different, uh, I'll say a different animal. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it does different, a lot of things different from what Montgomery County does. I mean, they do, they do a good job of, I guess, controlling, but we just have to figure out what we want for the community itself. And and then, and I think then move from there. I mean, it's, it's not easy because when I look at the room here with the task force, uh, we have people from different cultures from, mm -hmm. and, and their attitudes of the way they were raised may be different from all of us and, and, and your experiences too. I see a lot mm -hmm. of emphasis on the police, but I think it's going to, it's more and beyond that. It's the attitudes that we have in our cultures and in our communities that are that are the most, that is the big difference. I always say that on Sunday mornings and in our neighborhoods, those are the most segregated times in our communities. Mm -hmm. Got it. That, that's great. Thank you very much, Cedric. Michael, before you go, I uh, definitely want to share, Chris, thank you for your thoughts, Chris, inclusive process that includes alternative understandings of safety and addresses root causes and center mental health, those in marginalized spaces, young people. Great thoughts. Thank you very much. Michael, I'm going to get you up. Lauren, uh, we want, you know, you represent the NAACP. You're a parent, you're a liaison. After Michael, I want you to share your thoughts too. Michael, you're up. Uh, so just very briefly, I mean, I think a lot of people have already covered some of the things I hope to see. I mean, I definitely do want to see meaningful recommendations. I think we have some good diversity in this group, and I think we're going to be able to come up with a good set of recommendations. I would like to see some real change. I don't want it to be a task force report that just goes on the shelf like many I've seen in the county. And I mean, I've lived in the county 40 of my years of my life, and I've seen many that were like, worthy efforts, but didn't really go anywhere. So I really wanna make sure that we do something substantive. I believe that our city council and mayor 
and chief of police and others are willing to show some courage and actually take on some of these recommendations seriously. So I'm just very hopeful. I mean, I, I just, you know, do want to see something real. That would be, I guess, the main thing I would want to see come out of it. Well, great insight. Thank you very much. And and Lauren, I want you to bring us home uh, for your thoughts and discussion in this section. Well, that's a big task. <laughs> um, I, I think all I, I, what I wanted to say was I think it, a component that we I want to kind of focus on is community education as well. Um, I live in Ward 1, and I think it's really important. I, I'm on tons of listservs. We have like 50 million listservs here. And I think that, you know, I've seen a lot of talk on the listservs about somebody was idling out in front of my house for 10 minutes. Maybe we should call the police. Or I saw somebody who knocked on my door. Are they really with Pepco or whoever else? And it's always a black or brown person. And I've had conversations with people on my listservs about that to the point where, you know, it's kind of getting to be annoying. <laughs> and so I think that's really a really important component of this to kind of educate people about how community members really impact how things are dealt with, you know, because if you're going to call the police about something that's really mm -hmm. not a big deal, that could cause a huge issue for other people. And so I think that's kind of thing that I want to focus mm -hmm. on as well. Thank you for that. Before I turn it over to Madam Mayor, I, Jumana, I want to make sure I capture your thought. You said, I hope this group makes recommendations grounded in racial equity and racial justice, racial equity and economic justice. Uh, economic justice is racial justice that will have meaningful impact on the broadest number of residents. And that as Tacoma Park becomes more and more economically stratified, that the focus stays on the most marginalized Thank you for your thoughts. Deeply appreciate that. And, and folks, feel free, like we said, we're gonna provide our contact information at the end of this. So e if you have some thought that comes up later tonight while you're at dinner or tomorrow, email it to us so that we can include that uh, as we are heading forward. Thank you for this discussion. Madam Mayor, you're up. Great, thanks, Jevin. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Um, I know Councilman Searcy and myself and the entire city council and the staff who are with us tonight, uh, we're very excited for this process uh, to be taking place. Um, this was something that um, you know we've known for a while we needed to really roll up our sleeves and work on. And this summer, um, Councilman Searcy uh, you know, worked really hard in thinking about how do we really move ourselves forward on this issue um, this year? And I think having bringing on um, Link and their partners uh, to work with us um, was really important uh, because we want this to be a process. Uh, we want it to be done in a way where you'll get the materials you'll need. Um, we'll have the meetings. Um, we'll they'll be run on time, uh, and uh, and that we'll be able to create a space where people can um, share their experiences um, and their thoughts moving forward. And I can promise you, Michael, this will not be a report that sits on a shelf. Um, this is something that we want to put in place. Um, we want uh, the recommendations from you to be actionable. And we're really looking forward to moving forward in, in many of the areas, even that we just shared tonight. Um, and just to see all of you and the experiences that you bring to this um, conversation and also your willingness um, to take this time means a great deal to all of us. So I just want to extend my thanks to every single person here um, tonight. And please, if they're, you know, the team at Link is available for your feedback. Um, we're also available if there are things you want to see done differently or other things, um, please let us know because um, this is your task force. Um, you own it. <laughs> so we're here tonight uh, to help kick it off, but this is really about all of you and um, what you want to put into it. And we're looking forward to um, what we get out of it. So thank you very much. Awesome. I'll hand it over to uh, City Manager Lutlow. Thanks so much. Yes. City Manager Ludlow sounds very formal. I'm Susie Ludlow. I've been with the city for 27 years and, uh, and love this community. And I'm particularly pleased to have, um, to be associated with this process and to be able to hear from you uh, what you want to see, what you want to learn, what you want to convey. Your recommendations will go to the city council. 
uh, but they get implemented on a daily basis by city staff. And we provide data and background information uh, for you as well. And I want to um, assure you that we're interested in, in hearing these things, um, that city staff is um, open-minded to hearing these ideas, um, that we also would love to see the creativity and the, the moving um, the community forward um, kind of in, in these new days. And um, I also just, I do want to say how awesome each of you are. I think it's very impressive to have quite a group uh, to provide really good, thoughtful um, questions, suggestions, requests for information, and then recommendations. Um, to me, that's uh, the best thing that a city staff could work with is to have that kind of strength in the community um, to help carry things forward. So I'm happy that to be here, happy to be a resource. One of the things that I will mostly be invisible in this, just to hear you, uh, but when you need assistance or data or other kinds of resources, uh, we are here for you. And I know next week we will share what some of our different departments do that are in the public safety realm in the broad sense and look forward to your questions. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Madam Mayor and City Manager. I'm sorry, can I, can I interrupt one thing? Jessica Clark is my Deputy City Manager. She's here on the screen as well. Uh, she's also been doing an enormous amount of work coordinating these meetings and the data for you. So I just wanna give her a shout out. Uh, she's an awesome leader, um, but she, <laughs> she also uh, deserves uh, some attention. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. And we're thrilled to work with you all. Such a service to our community. So thank you so much. Jessica's definitely a muscle behind a, a lot of this. Um, but again, thank you all for, for those kind words. Um, as mentioned earlier, we're uh, excited to be facilitating this important and much needed dialogue for Tacoma Park. Uh, I hate to be uh, the guy that run over by one minute, uh, but now looking onward to our next meeting, we'll be uh, hosting uh, on March 23rd. Uh, we'll plan to meet for two hours uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. In our next meeting, we'll get the opportunity to get a full overview of how the, 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 the inner works of city government and, and how it's structured. Uh, and you'll get to hear from some city agencies and representatives, as I mentioned. Uh, in addition, we'll get to have that deeper discussion, like I mentioned, around subcommittees and structure and, and appointing you all to some of those subcommittees to serve on. Uh, but again, thank you all for your time today. Uh, my email is uh, jholtz. I see some of you all are pulling your pencils out, so I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, my email is jholtz at link, L I N K S P uh, dot com. Uh, so feel free to reach out to, I'll also drop it in. Oh, thank you, Cordell. Uh, thank you, Jevin. Uh, feel free to drop, uh, reach out to myself or Jessica. Uh, if you may have any questions or feedback or, or time constraints as we move forward with this process. Uh, so thank you all. Have a wonderful night and enjoy dinner if you haven't ate already. <laughs>